Hi, I'm Ted Raddick with the Finley Courier. I'm here with Dave Hahnemann and Brandon Schreider, and welcome to week two of Chalk Talk, presented to you by our sponsor, Road State College. Uh, be sure and check their website, roadstate.edu. Anything surprise you last week, Brandon? Um, I knew Lipsick was going to be good, but I mean, they definitely. <laughs> what was it? Yeah, 46 that, in the first that half. That score came across my Twitter at halftime, and that, that, yeah, that shot my eyebrows <laughs> up in a hurry. Um, I think everybody kind of expected with Brady Raider going to Van Buren. Uh, Van Buren maybe would have had a little bit better showing. Um, Arlington also had a pretty big win. Wow, yeah. Um, thought it would be a, a better game than that. Um, and I, even uh, Dave over at Finley, a uh, pretty good game going into overtime was mm -hmm. another exciting one as well. So, Okay. Dave, Finley has their home opener this Friday night. Uh, Upper Arlington comes to town. The Golden Give Bears. Give us the rundown. Um, one of the preseason reports I saw uh, predicted Upper Arlington to be a playoff contender this year. They opened with Reynoldsburg, which was also considered to be a playoff contender and they lost 17-14. They were driving for what could have been a winning touchdown and had an interception in the last minute of the game. Uh, they've got their quarterback back, their receiver back. They, from the stats I saw, they did not run the ball well against Reynoldsburg, but they did throw the ball well, which is uh, what Hilliard Bradley did well against Finley last uh, Friday night. Finley actually stuffed their running game very well, held them to like 60 yards rushing, but they had 230 yards passing and um, uh, I don't know if it's a wheel play. I'm not exactly sure what it was, but but Bradley ran a play that burned Finley several times. Once for a touchdown, once for a big game that led to a touchdown. And um, I thought their secondary would be a bit bitter, better than that. They're, they're young, but uh, their, their secondary is going to get tested again. Okay. So you think that's the key to the game this Friday? I, I think it is because, uh, like I said, they did a real good job. I was very impressed with how they stopped the run. Uh, Eubanks, uh, Mormon, a couple linebackers, those two guys combined for uh, four and a half sacks, I believe, or five sacks. So they did a good job stopping the running game. But uh, for them to be competitive, and I think they can be Friday night, they've got to shut down the pass. Okay. Uh, on Friday night, I will be in Ada as the Bulldogs host Arlington, uh, a pair of 1-0 and teams, and this will be kind of fun for me because I did not see either team in 2017, so I'm not going in with any preconceived notions or ideas about what I'm going to see. That can be a lot of fun sometimes. Uh, both teams are 1-0. and Both teams... Uh, May not roll off the tip of the tongue as a conference favorite, but they certainly hope to be in the mix. Um, so I'm looking forward to a great game. I was curious on how Ada would recover from losing all that all, that offensive talent, quarterback and receiver wise. When their quarterback, I talked to Brandon Hall in the spring as well uh, for a sophomore. Uh, really impressive how he carried himself, and so that's a guy to definitely keep an eye on. That could be. Pretty exciting, not only this year, but the next couple as well. So, so we got a pretty good slate of other games this this Friday, Brandon. Mm -hmm. uh, Hopewell and Mohawk are hooking up. Uh, LB has Archbold. Uh, Lipsick and Grove are playing. Macomb has Wayne Trace. This, this is a pretty good week. Well, yeah, uh, Liberty Benton, obviously, a uh, close one. Just let that one slip away. Archbold, a playoff team, or uh, Winford, a playoff team last year. They have Archbold this week. Also a playoff team, so that's two good non-conference tests. Testing a, an Eagles team that did lose a good amount. Um, I know Marshall Rose, 100 yards and two touchdowns last week on the ground. Um, it's whether or not the passing game is going to be up to par um, heading into that conference schedule. Um, you mentioned right. McComb. In LB, you know, they jump right into the conference schedule with Lipsick and Pandora, <laughs> so hello. <laughs> well, and, and you mentioned McComb. Um, Wayne Trace this week. Wayne Trace actually beat them. I think it was 31 to 28 last year, and that game alone probably kind of helped Wayne Trace get into the playoffs with six wins. So maybe a, a bit of a re revenge game for Macomb this week after I think about a 30 something point win in week one. Um, Upper Sandusky is actually one um, able to sneak out a win in that first week after having some, uh, I guess, health issues leading into the season. 
They got Mount Gilead this week was 0-10 last year. Um, if Upper gets the win, it would be their first 2-0 start since 2013. Um, North Baltimore as well at Otsego. Obviously some turnover there at coach, quarterback, another tough team, Otsego made the playoffs last year. If they were to drop that game, it would be their first 0-2 start since 2006. Not a lost season wow. by any means either way, especially with the turnover, but something to keep an eye on there. Um, but yeah. Okay, that'll wrap it up for us this week. We'd like again to thank our sponsor, Road State College. That's roadstate.edu. Be sure and check the Courier's website Friday night, the Courier on Saturday for all the football coverage.